I had an awareness of military service at a very young age. Uh, my father had been in uh, World War II as a Marine in the Pacific. Uh, and so I grew up understanding a little bit about military service. Of course, that was a very historic time in our nation's history, and uh, he had seen uh, some, some pretty terrible action uh, in the Pacific uh, for invasions of, uh, of Pacific Islands, uh, culminating in the Battle of Iwo Jima. Uh, so, you know, I had some, you know, understanding of military service uh, from that perspective, I would say. Um, and so as I grew up, um, it was during a time of, uh, you know, post-World uh, War II, post-Korea, and uh, in my teenage years, uh, the war in Vietnam had, had started. And so there was a, a, an awareness in society of military service at that time. But I had decided that I wanted to be a, a pilot, I wanted to fly, uh, and I wanted to uh, go into the United States Air Force. So uh, I was in ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps, uh, while I was at Auburn University. And in my second year, I, uh, I was accepted into the Advanced ROTC Scholarship Program. But since I was in engineering, it was a five-year curriculum. So you had compulsory ROTC service your first two years. You took a break your middle year, and then your last two years, you were uh, under a ROTC scholarship if you were accepted in the program. And so I was in my middle year, uh, 1969, summer of 1969, when uh, my brother-in-law uh, called me. He was in the communications flight out at the 125th Fighter Wing. And he called me and he said, uh, you're an ROTC, Air Force, you want to be a pilot, right? I said, yes. And he says, well, did you know that uh, right here in, in Jacksonville in the Florida Air National Guard, uh, they have fighters that you want to fly and, uh, and you know, they're advertising for pilots. If anybody wants to, to come fly, come sign up. I said, you're kidding me. And he said, no. So I jumped in the car that day and it was a Saturday. It was a drill weekend. And I drove down from uh, Auburn. It was about a six-hour drive. I drove down to Jacksonville. And I'd, I'd had an awareness of the unit uh, all my life. Uh, but I really didn't know it was easy to get in or at that time. And so uh, I came down and uh, they said, well, you're a local guy. You know, you're an engineering student. Uh, you're just kind of, the, you fit the profile of, of what we're looking for. So I signed up and I went back to Auburn, dropped out of the ROTC program uh, and finished uh, my degree in four years and uh, was enlisted into the unit in May of 1970. Well, why I joined the Florida Air National Guard is because uh, they were right in my backyard, in my hometown, and because uh, I had the opportunity to fly, which is what I wanted to do. And so um, uh, just uh, the timing of it was, uh, was kind of remarkable. We act actually had three pilot training slots coming open in, uh, in 1970. And uh, so there was a, a very you know, large demand for those slots, so I competed with, uh, with other pilot uh, selectees to, uh, to get those slots, and it worked out very well. But, uh, you know, the remarkable thing is if you grow up in a town that has a, a National Guard unit, an Air National Guard in this case, uh, the, your awareness of that is, uh, could, could very well lead you in to join that particular branch of service or that particular unit. Uh, everyone is motivated differently for, for reasons uh, that they serve, I think. Uh, uh, some people, airmen, join up probably for educational benefits, but once they get in, uh, they become like the rest of us. They get hooked. They get hooked on belonging to a team, to a motivated group of individuals who, uh, who serve something greater than themselves individually. Uh, and for me, it, you know, I was always a team kind of person, whether it was team sports or in Boy Scouts or, or those other organizations where I enjoy belonging to, uh, to a group of people with shared values. And so, uh, you know, I look back over my almost 44 years now, and, uh, and really the, 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 the gratitude I have for being able to serve with the group of individuals that I served with. Um, I would say once, once they get in, a very large uh, percentage of those young airmen uh, who get in for the first time are going to be hooked. They're going to be, you know, the hook is going to be set. They may have gotten in for educational benefits, they may have gotten in for uh, for travel, if, if they think they can travel around the world to some of the places we go and deploy, uh, they may have gotten in because they have a relative or a friend who got in and related certain experiences uh, to them. But once, uh, for a large group of them, I think they're going to be just like me. They're going to be hooked. And it's, uh, it's about belonging to an organization that, uh, that few understand and few contribute to, but belonging to an organization with shared values and motivation and, uh, and the, the, the feeling, the positive feeling you get from, uh, from belonging to an organization like that is, is special. If you really enjoy this business, then stick with it and, uh, and be the best you can be at it and opportunity will come your way also. You know, I've seen three downturns 
uh, in the Defense Department. Uh, the one we're going through now is we've, we've done this before. Uh, we'll come out, you know, the, we have some difficult years right now financially with sequestration and all those things impacting our service. But I am confident we will come out a stronger and better organization with even more opportunity for those who are serving today to make a real contribution to this nation's defense.